it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says, love suffers long, love is patient, and love is kind. So we looked at that. We looked at that these are really important. They really, really are important. Love is kind. And then that took me, I want you all to keep that place in 1 Corinthians 13. And let's go to James chapter 2. Uh, in that 
process, we need to we really need to look at that uh, kindness. God didn't put that as one of His characteristics so that it could be overlooked. God has called us to it. I have a, a New King James uh, Bible that has little study notes here at the bottom, and I read this for that uh, Luke chapter. First John chapter three, verse seventeen and eighteen. I want to read it to you. I thought it was really interesting. And uh, so, for verse seventeen, we, we know that it said that what, but whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? It says goods means course of life, living or, or livelihood. This same Greek word is translated life. It refers to material objects that sustain life. Therefore, the need that is mentioned is for food, for clothing, and shelter. Believers can lay down their lives for fellow believers by giving some of their livelihood to those who are in need. By giving our material possessions to others, we can demonstrate the same type of self-sacrificial love that Christ demonstrated on the cross. To love in word is to speak loving words but to stop short of doing anything to prove that love. The opposite of loving in word is loving in deed and truth. So, it's, it's really it's good, I guess, to, to speak things to people that are nice, but what this has called us to do, this, this kindness has called us into action. When we see somebody in need uh, that maybe doesn't have enough clothes, then we go to our closet and we say, well, we got plenty. And, and we try to figure out a way to help them. When we see somebody who is struggling, needs food, we do it. We don't do it because it's a good thing to do. We do, we do it because it's what God has called us to do. We don't do it because we're trying to, to make ourselves high. We're not doing it so that we can be lifted up and we can be glorified. We're doing it because it's who, who we were created to be, what we've been called to do. We don't do it because we're rich. We don't do it because we're poor. We don't do it for any reason other than the fact that God said do it, and, and that's where we need to be. It's that simple. It's, it's not complicated. It's real simple. If we see somebody with a need, and we have the ability to meet that need, then we meet it. That's what God's called. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to try to figure it out on whether we should or we shouldn't do it. It's real simple. He said be kind. He said be kind. That's a characteristic that we're supposed to display in our life. We can't take what, what did Job say? Naked he came into the world and naked he will leave. So we need to remember that. This is, this is a temporary place for those of us who have been born again, those of us who are saved. This is a temporary place and we've only got but a moment, but a blink of an eye, of an opportunity to display the characteristics of God here in this world. To have a, a change in, in a, in a, on others through the through the life, the, the love that God can fill us with, the love that can pour out from us to others. I, I started thinking about uh, well, what would be a good story in Scripture that uh, was a, a real good, really, really good uh, picture of somebody living a life displaying the act of kindness. And so I went to, to Luke chapter 10, verse 30 through 37. This is the story of the, the Good Samaritan. Yeah. Jesus tells this story. And, and he tells this story so that he can get people to grasp. He tells parables all throughout the Bible so we can kind of grasp a hold of what he's trying to get through to our thick head. Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest. And we think about priests, we think, well, they're probably pretty good people, right? I mean, preachers, priests, pastors, they should be doing what's right, guys. A certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, a Levite was... 
He's walking down the road. And when he arrived at the place where that man was, he came and he looked and he passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan. And a Samaritan was an Israel of the lowest status. They were of the, the poorest people in Israel at the time. But it says a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, he came where he was. Enter into his plan. 
plan and his purpose for you. In uh, Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 5, it says, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of the things we have done, but because of his mercy. That's the scripture I'm speaking of. The scripture where I said Jesus went to the cross. It says it right here. Jesus went to the cross and made a way and saved us. Because of kindness and love. And that's what I'm speaking of tonight. Kindness and love. It's easy to be kind to people who make themselves available to do it. And that's something we need to talk about. Because I can't believe But how often every day we learn than biblical people, than people who are hardened. Maybe those people who aren't saved, or maybe those people who do be wrong at one point in our life, who maybe we weren't living by. How often do we approach people who have a chip on their shoulder, who are ready, who are locked up and ready to rock? You know, how often do we do that? How easy is it for us to be kind of evil? That's a real test. You know, it's easy. Chris. Chris loves me. He cares about me. He's kind to me. But if I'm out on the job site and I spray silk over and there's a person to drive through and trying to stop them and they cuss me out, then all of a sudden it's hard for me to be kind. That's where the protest begins. So what we have to do is we have to work that kind kindness out every day. When we're put in situations, we have to purposefully Get out of my will. My will would be to, to, to do something crazy to this guy, you know, so that he would never want to talk to me that way again. But God's will is to be kind, show him love. And the more that we do that, you're not going to become the most kind person overnight, just like this. But the more that we do that, those, those attributes, those characteristics are going to become more and more evident. And you'll find that one day, you'll find yourself just being kind, even in all situations. I thought about Miss Carol just last night. She was up there talking about how, you know, she just felt like things just were just kind of, ugh, you know. And and then she started thinking, well, I need to pray. And she prayed for three or four months, and she and she asked.